We are in Fishers, Indiana. We're gonna go in here and talk to the Fishers PD. They have figured out a way to couple a bunch of different technologies, especially in solving cases, and they're doing it in hours instead of weeks, months, and maybe even years. So let's go inside. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Jim Hawkins uh, with the Fishers Police Department, Fishers, Indiana. I'm the supervisor of the Forensic Services Unit uh, assigned to the Investigations Division of the Fishers Police Department. I've been with the Fishers Police Department for 19 years. So essentially, um, a case will come in uh, with physical evidence. Um, the case will be assigned to a criminal forensic investigator at, with the Forensic Services Unit. The uh, investigator will evaluate that individual case, the individual items, and will determine the uh, processing that needs to be done to get us the best possibility of fingerprints or DNA. When a piece of evidence comes in, say typically if we don't have, if we're, if we're searching for DNA on it, but we don't have uh, anything visual and you need distinct you know, blood stains. So we would be looking for touch or transfer DNA on, a, on an article of clothing. That piece of evidence will go through the vacuum metal deposition process, which will allow us to visually um, see where that transfer DNA is at. From that point, uh, depending on what the piece of evidence is, it'll then go over to the DCS-5 unit, which will be used for um, any kind of enhancement of potential fingerprints that might be there. And also additional photo documentation um, can be enhanced with the DCS-5 and allow us to uh, have proper um, photo documentation that we can use during the court process. Once the area of interest has been identified um, with the vacuum metal deposition documented with the DCS-5, it will then move into the MVAC processing, at which point, rather than um, if I have a shirt where my we think my bad guy touched the chest area of a, of a, of a shirt, back in the day, we would have just sent that entire shirt off. They would have swabbed all over, hoped for the best. By visually enhancing and uh, documenting where that transfer DNA is with the vacuum metal deposition, rather than just processing an entire shirt, we're using the MVAC to go over specifically the areas of interest where we can visually see that DNA transfer to try and cut down on cross-contamination, specifically collect as much of the uh, bad guy DNA as possible. Once that process is completed and the uh, MVAC system is collected, it's concentration filter, the concentration filter will be extracted by the criminal forensic investigator. And depending on what the level of uh, DNA collection is. So if it's a single source DNA, such as blood, um, uh, seminal fluid, um, other, other bodily fluids, and depending on the quantity that is there, the uh, criminal forensic investigator will elect whether to take a sampling of the MVAC filter for the rapid DNA instrument, or whether to just collect that filter as is and send it off for conventional DNA um, testing. If it goes into the rapid DNA instrument and the rapid DNA instrument develops a profile, that information will be sent to the case detective who is working the criminal case, uh, who will then go and start obtaining any exclusionary and or suspect uh, DNA standards that we would then place into the rapid DNA in order to confirm uh, the DNA sample from the article of uh, the article of evidence that was processed with the MVAC is in fact a match to our suspect. So this allows us to get um, at times same day results, uh, depending on, on what the case is. If it's a high profile case, if it's a high priority case, um, and I need to push to the front of the line. Let's say, for example, we have a, you know, a home invasion burglary where someone was hurt. My, my CFIs would be able to perhaps process um, an article of bloody clothing that we think might have the suspect's blood on there. And we would be able to know that day, one, by invacking it and then throwing it into, placing it into rapid DNA and testing, is there a DNA profile there? And if so, getting a sample from our, our suspect, confirming that that is in fact the correct suspect. Because the last thing I want to do is, you know, like with anything in a lab, there's, there's costs, there's consumables but there's also costs in order to conduct a criminal investigation. And what is the cost of having three detectives spend 40 hours working a suspect who we're able to, in a couple hours, determine is not the person of interest? Uh, you know, it's, it's not only is it a, a, a 
savings in manpower and, and, and cost over the course of the investigation, but you're also not wasting your time looking at the wrong person because we don't want to spend our time and we certainly don't want to um, arrest somebody who isn't the person that we're looking for. So not only is this targeting um, and quickly establishing who our suspect is, it also allows us to determine who our suspect is not. Um, and exonerating the innocent can be just as important to a criminal case and the conclusion of that criminal case as making sure that you catch the, the correct person. Uh, hello, my name is Matt Noyes. I'm a forensic investigator with the Fishers Police Department, and I wanted to share some information about some of the technology that we use to help us solve cases. So this is a pretty common piece of evidence that we may find. So when we're investigating a burglary or some sort of assault, it's pretty common for us to find some sort of clothing that may have been left behind. So a great piece of equipment that we use to help us out is the MVAC. So anytime we find a piece of clothing, we'll first inspect it to see if there's any sort of biological fluids that are on there. For this shirt, we simulated some blood that may be on there. And frequently we'll, we will use the MVAC to be able to help us collect some of the DNA from that. So once we collect some of the DNA, we can use a vacuum metal deposition chamber, or we can use rapid DNA to help us quickly be able to identify a suspect. So we've identified a sample that we want to collect. So we'll use the MVAC to snag that sample for us. So, have Jamie hold on to that for me. So whenever I'm processing, I like to soak it really good first. That way all the solution can get, you know, into the area that I'm interested in. If you spray it and then immediately soak it up, especially for jeans or other items, it may not completely soak into the item. So let it sit for a minute and I will suck it back up. And as I'm collecting the sample, I want to overcross the area so that way I don't miss anything. And once I get all the spots I'm interested in, I'll go back through a second time to make sure I get everything that's been soaked into the shirt. Even if you can visibly see the stain, you're still in back. Right? Yes. So we still like to use the MVAC because the swabs work great for a lot of surfaces. But if I'm using a swab, I'm often picking up a lot of things that are not just the blood or the seminal fluid that I'm after. So if it's in concrete, if I swab it, I'm also picking up the concrete. If it's on drywall, I'm also picking up some of that drywall. If I use the MVAC, I'm able to use that filter and a pre-filter to get rid of a lot of the debris and other thing that may be in there. So I have a much cleaner sample going into rapid. Excellent, so we've collected our sample and now we will run the solution through a filter. So we'll take it off here. Start the vacuum up. So we like to do it nice and slow. We like to try to aim for the center as much as we can. And then we'll repeat this process three times. If there's a lot of debris or a lot of other things that's stuck in it, it'll go through a pre-filter first, and then we'll put it through this filter. So the filter's ready to go. So after it's dried, we'll cut it out. So we'll use this sterile scalpel. I like to hold the scalpel kind of at the edge of the cup on the outside, so that way I can get the whole filter and I'll just rotate the cup all the way around. We have a dry box that'll go in and I fold it like a little taco. There we go, and this will get sealed up and go to the police lab for analysis. So once the filter's out, if it's a single source sample, we'll put it into rapid DNA. So we like to use the packaging from the MVAC because all the stuff comes sterile, so that way we can have a nice sterile surface to work on. So we'll get the filter out, cut a small sliver off of it, place it into a rapid cartridge. And I'll have a swab that I'll push in to hold it in place, and it's ready to go into rapid. So I have my sample for rapid DNA. I'll enter the case information and everything else for our system. Place it in. And it's good to go. After I place it in, we'll get an um, answer back in 90 minutes. So it'll let me know if there's a profile there, if there's a partial profile, where we'll have to have a certified DNA analyst look at it and decide what the issue is or it'll come back with a red X saying, no bueno. This is our vacuum metal deposition chamber. This is great because we can use it for items that are both porous and non-porous. So it creates a vacuum inside, and then it uses very small amounts of metal that are heated up, and it helps us identify fingerprints and areas that may have been touched by the suspect to help us figure out where we want to use the MVAC to collect DNA. All right, so we finished pumping down. We're now ready to uh, throw some metal on here. So there's three different boats. So it's usually gold, zinc 
and then silver. So for dark objects like this, we've usually found that silver works really well. All right, crank it up. So we'll start to heat it up. Let it run for a minute and we should start to see contrast along the collar of the shirts. So you can see the sides of it, they're starting to turn yellow and then purple. All right, open it up, see what we got. So you can see where we ran the VMD and then where it was folded to where the metal wasn't able to make it. But you can see on the top here where it kind of turns this lighter blue, this is where we'd be interested in swapping. So we also look at the reports to see where the person may have been touched or where we may be interested in. But this way we can focus on a single area rather than trying to collect a sample from the whole shirt. So if we find a fingerprint or find other evidence that we may want to get sent off for comparison, we use the Digital Capture System 5 or DCS5. This is great because it has a very high quality camera and also has enhancement features on it as well. So if I find a fingerprint that I think is suitable to send off, I'm able to capture it easily, back it up, and then be able to send it for comparison. It's given us more options and that's what's great. So before Jim mentioned um, swabbing clothing, I mean, that was kind of the standard for a long time where with this, I mean, we're not only swabbing clothing, we can do blankets, couches, interiors of cars. So it just gives us one more option to be able to collect DNA. Same thing with the, the VMD or with the digital capture system five. It just gives us more options to be able to get more evidence um, to be able to identify suspects or um, folks that we may want to have investigators follow up with. So how has that changed uh, you know, the, the speed that you've been able to solve cases? The speed has been awesome. So especially with rapid DNA, it gives us suspect information a lot quicker. And then anytime we have evidence that before we may not have been able to do anything with, we're not telling officers, absolutely collect that. There may be an option for us to be able to identify somebody. But speed wise, it's been great because now we have kind of a, an assembly line of different options that we have for our evidence. So instead of having to do, you know, just super glue and then have to send it off to the state police lab for DNA, we can do a lot more stuff for ourselves and that's sped the process up a lot. Um, we've had MVEC for um, a little over a year and a half now. Um, and I will say that um, I've been very pleased with the results. Um, it has yielded DNA profiles on physical, off of physical evidence that we were never getting before. Um, it is, I anticipated it helping out on casework, uh, helping out on processing evidence. I, I, I had, I had, I had, a, I had faith that that would be the case. Um, where I was surprised was how did quickly and, uh, how much we became dependent on using it on a regular basis. Um, it is yielded such positive results with the collection of usable DNA profiles um, that it has easily justified the expense that we've made on it and the continuing expenses that you have with consumables, which you have, that's, you're going to have that with anything in a lab. So when you are talking to agencies that aren't using this process, what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing it the way you're doing it versus the way you're doing it? Well, I'd say, um, you know, Disadvantage wise, um, if you want to call it that, there are, there can be some more expenses at the beginning of it. But again, like I said earlier, um, it, spending a little bit of money on consumables can save you a lot of money down the line on manpower. So, you know, take that for what it, for, for what it is. Um, it can be more time consuming. I mean, it's a whole lot easier to go to a crime scene, pick up a bloody shirt, put it in a box, cardboard box, seal it up and send it to the state lab and move on to your next case. That's, that's hitting the easy button and it is easy and it's cheap and it's quick, but it also is not going to yield the results that we're seeing with this process. So I think the pro being is we get a lot better results by doing it this way. Um, you know, and you have to decide what is a priority for your agency. And for the Fishers Police Department, our priority is ensuring we, as quickly as possible, identify the correct person, um, process the evidence in a way to allow us to gather all the physical, um, whether it's DNA, fingerprinting, whatever the case may be, 
in order to do that quickly is our priority. So I would tell an agency, you would have to look internally and determine what is your priority. And if your priority isn't similar to ours, um, I might I might ask why. 